During my very first year as a print-on-demand seller, I wasted so much time and effort doing a lot of things the hard way. Now, print-on-demand is one of the best business models. It's really easy to get started, and it doesn't typically take a lot of time compared to some other business models you could try. But there's definitely some ways that you can make things a lot harder for yourself, especially if you are a new seller. So in today's video, I actually have 10 of my best hacks that I have used in my own business over the last several years that have really either helped me make a lot more profit with less effort or saved a ton of time so that I can get a lot more listings out, which inevitably is what is going to end up helping you make a lot more profit in the long run. So some of these tips you probably have never heard before, and I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into them to not waste any time. Now, the very first tip is something a little bit newer, so you might have never even thought to do this. And that is if you are selling on Printify, which if you don't sell with Printify, I can't recommend them enough. They really easily integrate with your selling platform like Etsy to be able to sell a wide variety of different products. But they recently introduced something called Printify Choice when it comes to choosing a manufacturing partner. So in the past, you used to really have to do a lot of due diligence to sift through all of the different hundreds of manufacturers that they have on their platform to figure out who is going to be the best one for this particular product. Now, I have given you my recommendations of a lot of the ones that I like to use, but now with Printify introducing this Printify Choice, you have the option on a lot of items to just go ahead and click Printify Choice for the manufacturing partner, and that is automatically going to pick the best person for that particular item. So a lot of times what Printify is doing is they are picking the most highly rated, the lowest cost, and the one that can get you the quickest turnaround time. And if there ever are any items that go out of stock or one manufacturer is having some problems without you even having to do anything, they are going to switch you over to a different manufacturing partner that's going to be able to get that job done for you. So what I like about this is it really just takes a lot of the guesswork out of this whole equation of choosing a manufacturing partner. Now, this is especially helpful if you are starting to sell more products. Maybe in the past, you've just done t-shirts, you had your t-shirt person that you knew did really well, but now you wanna start selling some sweatshirts or maybe some tumblers and mugs or even something like stickers. That can be a lot of time trying to sift through videos or read articles about which manufacturing partners are really the best for that and going to be able to give you the best turnaround possible for your customers. So if you haven't tried Printify Choice yet, I highly recommend it. Now, the next hack that I wish a lot more new sellers would really take advantage of because this made such a difference in my own print-on-demand business, and that was to sell on multiple different platforms the same items. Now, I know when you first get started, it can be very overwhelming to just learn one print-on-demand platform, but once you've really figured things out, it's really advantageous to add another place to sell because you have already spent so much time researching the niches you're going to sell in, making your designs, writing your titles and tags, and uploading the item somewhere. If you can save all of that effort figuring out the items and the designs and just go ahead and get to the upload process on three or four other sites, that could be huge in your business. Now, the sites that I typically like to recommend, first is definitely going to be something like Etsy integrated with Printify. And then I really love Amazon Merch. Now, they are a little bit more exclusive, harder to get into, but I definitely recommend trying your hand at applying. I have a video with some tips how to do that right here. But there also are some other great platforms too that are a little bit smaller, but you still can make a ton of sales. All of these places, I am making sales every single month and you definitely can too. So that's going to be Redbubble, TeePublic, and Zazzle. But there's a whole bunch of other print-on-demand platforms as well. So if you're already doing the work to sell on a place like Etsy, it could be really advantageous to also put all of those designs on these other platforms, or at least take your best-selling designs and put them somewhere else too. Now, $100 a month, maybe on one platform, it's not really life-changing money that would be great if you could be making that, but if you're making $100 on five different platforms, that really starts to add up. So having more income coming in from more places can really help you actually scale this into a full-time business. Now, the next hack is one that I really have talked a lot about on my channel, and this is something that really helped me kind of get to the next level when it came to selling print-on-demand items, and that is by creating my whole cross-niching system. So 
Researching niches is definitely one of the most tedious parts of being a print-on-demand seller, and it can be really hard to know what niches are actually going to get sales or have enough demand but not too much competition. So what I continue to do in my business that keeps helping me generate new best sellers every single season is to take two different niches that by themselves have a lot of competition, but by kind of combining those and making a more specific niche, I have something really unique that people are still looking for, but there's not as many other sellers competing in that niche. So one of the easiest ways you can do this is just by taking the category of holidays. So coming up, we're going to have Halloween and Christmas, which are super profitable holidays. And then you can cross that with something like professions. So you could do something like a Halloween speech pathologist, or you could do something like a Christmas preschool teacher. Now, preschool teacher shirts by themselves are going to be really hard to stand out in, but if you can add something a little bit more unique, like adding a holiday twist or something else to it, that's going to give you a lot better chance. Now, I created kind of a whole method of how to do this, and it's a little bit more extensive than I can just put in this single video, so I actually have a full about hour-long workshop for you guys that's totally free if you do want that full kind of teaching on how to do this cross niching method. I also send you over a guidebook for cross niching that has over 40,000 different niche ideas, as well as some other guides for getting started on your print on demand journey. So I will link all the information to get started in that workshop down below. And if you sign up, I will just send you all the links to watch that video to your email. Now, the next hack that I have used so much in my print on demand business, and I'm really upset that I didn't start doing this way sooner, but that is to have design templates or design styles that you really perfect and use over and over again for so many of your designs. Now, when I first got started, I really felt like I needed to make a 100% unique design for literally every single product I sold. But there are some really scalable design styles that you can use over and over again regardless of what niche you are selling in. So what I have done is whenever I make a design that I really like, maybe it's text-based or has some text in an image, I am going to save that. And then anytime I can think of another niche that would work well with that same design style, I am just going to reuse that over and over again. And if you are selling in multiple different niches, you don't have to worry about people seeing the same types of design because they are only interested in the one niche they are looking for. So they're not typically going to see that other items that you're selling in separate niches have really similar design styles. Now, the other thing that piggybacks right off of this is using pre-made templates. So I talked about I make some of my own templates and will use those, but I also use different services that offer templates already made that I can just switch out some of the text or the images, maybe change some of those colors. So my favorite design suite that has templates in it is definitely going to be Kittle. I will link them down below as well but they have thousands of different templates for everything from t-shirts to sweatshirts to other print-on-demand items. And you can really just look up things like Halloween or you could search like retro and it would bring up a bunch of different designs in that style. And you can easily just change out the niche that you are selling in, add some new text, a new phrase, and you have 100% unique design ready to sell. Now this saves so much time when it comes to designing. And you already know that this is a good design. So if you're really new to this, sometimes it's hard to figure out what types of designs actually will sell on a place like Etsy or Amazon. So this takes a lot of the guesswork out of it and really just enables you to get way more uploads every single day. So I can't recommend using a design template enough, especially when you are first getting started and figuring things out. Now, the next hack that I use all of the time really is a simple one, but it can be so powerful. And that is having a place on your computer or in your notes app where you are saving all your titles, descriptions, and tags. Now, a lot of times I am selling in many different niches, but there are niches that I'm coming back to time and time again. So by having all of those things like descriptions and tags saved, I can quickly look up the keywords that I think would bring up that note, and then I can simply copy and paste the description or the tags to reuse when I create another design. So for example, if I was creating designs in that nursing niche, I am going to save 
save all the information that I put in that listing in just a simple note or on a Word document on my computer. Then anytime I'm creating nurse designs, I can easily come back to that and either take parts or all of that description or tags and even parts of the title that I think have done really well. This just saves a lot of time so that you don't have to go back and kind of re-figure out what you need to include in the description, what you need to include in tags. It will just save you that initial work that you already did if you can have those in a place easy to access and use again. Now, the other tip that is seemingly really simple, but it's a big time-saving hack, is one that a lot of people don't even really know that was an option. So when I first got started selling on Etsy, I was super adamant that I wanted to have every single mock-up be completely unique and original. Now, that is fine if you want to do that, but it can become very tedious as you're continuing to look for new mock-ups every single time. Now, the reality of an Etsy store, especially where you're selling a bunch of different niches is that people are going to look at the one item they have found via search and they're typically not going to go visit your store and scroll through all of the different pages of items that you have for sale. So it's totally okay for you to reuse mock-ups with every single design. So kind of what I like to do is have between five or ten mock-ups that I really like and I am going to reuse those over and over again for each new product that I make. That gives you enough variation that at a simple glance, your store doesn't look like just a copy and paste of all the exact same mock-up and item. It's not going to make you waste a ton of hours every single time you create a new item to find the perfect mock-up for that. And if you are looking for a place that creates mock-ups for you really easily, that's going to auto format those and not take a lot of time, I definitely recommend Place It. They're who I've used pretty much from the beginning to create mock-ups because I wasn't super familiar with like how to take a design and kind of warp it on a t-shirt and create something that looks really realistic. So I love that you just upload your design and it's going to auto format it on the mock-up for you and you can just download it and it's ready to use. So I'll also have all their information linked down below if you do want to give them a try. Now the next hack that I really am trying to encourage new sellers to be implementing in their businesses all the time is whenever you have a product that sells so for example if you have a t-shirt this holiday season that makes a sale what I almost always recommend is taking that design and then putting it on some other items that you are selling in your shop so a lot of time and maybe not pay off if automatically every single design you are uploading you're going to put it on a t-shirt and a mug and a sweatshirt and a tote bag and a throw pillow you can easily end up making so many different items with the same design that inevitably might not even sell. But if you put a design on a t-shirt and that sells for you, you have validated that that is a good niche and a good design. So take that information and put that same design on a few other products that you already want to sell. Or if you've been focusing on just one product type, so say your shop only has mugs right now, if you've been thinking of expanding to a different product type, the easiest way to do that is only take any of the products that have sales and put them on that new product type to start. That way you can really see if this is going to be a good product for you to expand to, and you're not wasting a lot of time putting one design on tons of different things and just waiting for hopefully you to get views and sales. Now, the next hack is definitely one that really helped me to scale my print-on-demand business and get a lot quicker at making titles, tags, and descriptions. And that is by using some kind of research and SEO tool. So specifically, if you are selling on Etsy, I definitely recommend the tool Sales Samurai. Now, what this is going to help you do is it is going to give you a lot of information, not only about if this is a good niche to sell in, if there's a lot of competition or even demand for this item, but it's going to tell you what kind of keywords you should be including in your description, in your tags. It's going to show you comparable items so you can get ideas of what other people are doing and implement that for your own products. It also can tell you information about what price is kind of a good starting point for this, what other people are charging for shipping or 
what they are also including in their listings. So it just gives you a lot of information that you could possibly spend hours scrolling on Etsy to kind of try to sift through all of this data and figure out what it all means. It's easily putting it in one place for you to have access to. So I know SEO can be one of the most mysterious parts of print on demand, but using some kind of tool can definitely help save you a ton of time and make listings that are going to get more people to actually find them, click on them, and make sales. Now, the next thing that I wish I had used way sooner was taking advantage of pre-made graphics and text from a place like Creative Fabrica. So if you haven't ever used Creative Fabrica before, I really like them because they are one of the lowest cost subscriptions for print-on-demand graphics and items to use. Now, while a lot of subscriptions are going to range between like $10 and $20, Creative Fabric is typically only going to be less than $5 a month, and you get access to hundreds of thousands of different print-on-demand graphics, assets, text, images that you can use. So really, if you are trying to make a design for almost anything, you can search that in Creative Fabrica and it is going to pull up a bunch of different assets that you can download and use. And they have a specific categories where you can toggle on print on demand and that is going to only show you items that are free and clear to actually use and sell in your print on demand stores. So I typically don't spend time making my own graphics. I do have a little bit of a background in design and so that is something that I enjoy but I just found that the time never really paid off when there are so many other pre graphics ready to use that in that same amount of time that I maybe could have drawn drawn one image to use on a t-shirt I could have made like 20 other designs with ready to use graphics. So if you've never tried Creative Fabrica, I definitely recommend giving them a try even for a month and seeing if you like using a lot of those pre-made assets. It can save so much time and make really really cute designs that can become a best seller. Now, if you have implemented a lot of these hacks, but still feel kind of lost about where to get started with print on demand, how to actually grow this into a full time thing, I definitely recommend watching this video next. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.